This was a bit of an experiment, and it appears they walked right into my hands. Welcome back, or welcome for the first time, to The Brie Bear Show. And I just want to preface with a disclaimer. I am absolutely not in any way referencing all of the anti-MLM community, only anti-MLM creators or any content creator who calls people out by using ad hominem attacks. It is not just this group of creators that is perpetuating harmful behavior. I know there are more. So what I'm here for today is to tell you exactly what kind of backlash I received from the anti-MLM creators that I spoke about in my first two videos. And I wanna to talk to you about how this mimics and mirrors the alleged abuse and cult-like tactics, manipulation tactics, if you will, that anti-MLM creators are often calling out MLMs for. So I started this series with two videos showcasing some poor behavior that I had seen happening within a small group of anti-MLM creators. The very first thing that they did after my video was posted was they went to my Instagram account. They figured out who I was, went to my Instagram account, and they started reporting. I don't know who, but I know someone was reporting my content. Also, they went and they reported uh, my YouTube videos as much as they could. They went on quite the disliking spree. So my videos were not removed because I didn't break a single community guideline in any of those two videos. I ensured that before I posted anything while I was editing, I knew the rights and the wrongs of YouTube. So they're probably, I think they were hoping that if they disliked enough of my videos, the algorithm would uh, tank. And, you know, I think they really wanted to silence me. I think they really wanted to um, take me out as fast as they possibly could. <laughs> One member of the Snark crew did actually reach out to me personally in my inbox. She had been featured on my very first video, pulling back the curtains of the anti-MLM movement, and she was featured with the Tanya video. She did say that after that video was created, after she had seen my messages or comments and really thought about it, she took the video down. Now, I said that in my first video. I knew she took the, that first video down. She also said that she did issue an apology. She was very level-headed in her messages. She was not mean. She was not catty. She was kind. And she basically said, listen, I'm going to try and do better. And that's all I can hope for. Now, I do also want to mention that if I had seen an apology from her back in October, I would not have put that video in my first reaction commentary video. I did reach out to another member of the Snark crew. She had a very emotional response to my second video that I created, and I totally understand why now. So it was one of the parts about mom shaming where I was calling multiple people out for mom shaming, and she had said something on there about it, about mom shaming. And in my response to that, I said, you're not a mother. I said, that is a fact. And she apparently has had some issues with infertility. And so I did issue her an apology into her DMs. I have not received a response and I don't expect to, but I wanted her to understand I am not a monster. Um, and I did not want that to come off as some kind of ad hominem to her. And I, I do believe that she was a little bit complicit with the behavior that was going on on her streams. And I mentioned that in the inbox as well, and I am going to maintain that position. And so I just want to um, ensure that we still remain human in our efforts to change things. We still have to remain human. We have to remain level-headed. We have to have some sense of accountability, and I'm willing to take accountability for that, hurting her, even though it wasn't my intent. She said it hurt her. I believe her. The other lady said she apologized. I believe her. If they come around and they start putting out some harmful content, I will call it out. But as for right now, I think their behaviors will change. I just want to add for clarity, nothing I mentioned from this point forward is in reference to the two creators I just mentioned. Someone had asked why I didn't reach out to these women beforehand and talk to them behind the scenes about the issues that I had with their content before making these videos. And I just want to remind you that I have had conversations in comments from that first uh, video from October, the Tanya video. So imagine 
that that is my impression of how these women interact with people who challenge them. Ultimately, I had to make them feel exactly as they made the subjects of their videos feel. Even though I did not publish their screen names and I did not publish their first and last names, it was just their faces and one video did have their first names. I never once used ad hominem in any of my content. It was that visceral response, that hard emotion that actually got them to start thinking. Now, when they started thinking, they also started attacking. Let's get into that. They start reporting my content, and then after that is when the manipulation really, really set in. They started with the deflection. The definition of deflection is when someone redirects the focus, blame, or criticism away from themselves to preserve self-image and avoid negative consequences. It is a defense mechanism and is well known by the victims of narcissistic abuse. There are four forms of deflection, gaslighting, changing the subject, projection, and attacking. I'm going to provide you with evidence of all four of these tactics that were elicited after my initial videos were made. The first one, gaslighting. Gaslighting is to manipulate someone using psychological methods into questioning their own sanity or powers of reasoning. An example would be if you're in a fight with someone, you're arguing and they say you're crazy and other people think you're crazy too as their response to you providing a valid argument. One member of the snark crew took to her social media account, which keep in mind I had already blocked because of that reporting uh, and was on private. So I want you to keep that in mind because an open letter to me, assumedly, was written. And in this letter, she claims I was um, obsessed with her. I was cyber stalking her. She was afraid for her safety. I will put the letter up here without identifiers. But I never actually would have seen this letter myself because she was on private. So the intention wasn't to directly gaslight me. Her intention, therefore, in my opinion, was to gaslight the internet. And to make the internet believe I was the, the, the cuckoo one. So they wouldn't, assumedly, find my content and believe anything that I said. Afterthoughts, I would like to add that I never once sent her a message. And in this uh, open letter that was indirect and not open, she said that she could not ignore my videos and messages. Yeah, no, no messages were sent to her. Number two. The second way that they manipulated, tried to manipulate the situation. Changing the subject. This is when somebody changed the subject. I don't want to talk about this, especially because you did something wrong as well. They will try to deflect by placing blame on someone else or just completely changing. Well, remember this time when you did this, right? So another member of the snark crew decided to start coming for my profession. I work as a virtual transformation coach and I help women quit dieting and implement healthy habits as a side effect of leaving the diet cycle behind and implementing healthy habits that will last a lifetime. They lose fat. They tried to say that I was not credentialed. I was not uh, qualified. They posted in their stories that people should run because they couldn't find my credentials. This means not only do they care what I do for work, but they actually went and looked up my name to try and see what kind of credentials I had. If I was a, I'm assuming a PT, um, but the way in which I help women, you don't need to be a personal trainer. You don't need to be a nutrition coach because I don't personally train anybody and I'm not telling them what to eat. Also, um, I was a nurse and I know very well how licensing works. They also came to attack me because I said, I'm a nurse and I lost 120 pounds. I'm plenty qualified for what I do with my clients. And if you see the big picture here, you understand this is that changing of the subject. And again, another kind of form of gaslighting. They wanted to get the attention off of them and make me look like the bad guy in any way, shape, or form 
that they could pull out of their booty holes. And the third method of deflection is projection. This is the act of placing unacceptable feelings, wants, or desires onto another person. An example, a person who feels inferior may constantly accuse others of being stupid or incompetent. I didn't personally see this, but it was hearsay. So keep that in mind, just being honest. One of them apparently was saying that anyone who claims to be a feminist wouldn't make mean videos about other women. My videos weren't mean. I did not personally attack anyone. And second, I said that. And that doesn't make you anti-MLM. That makes you anti-woman. Yeah, this can also be considered a two quoque, quoque, quack, T-U-Q-U-O-Q-U-E, argument of hypocrisy, avoiding refutation or criticism by reverting the same criticism back to the accuser. And the fourth form of manipulation that they tried to use against me was just straight up attacking me. So when someone is so desperate to get the attention off themselves that they lash out or attack their victim, mocking, name calling, threatening, etc. In the emotional video that one of the snark crew members made last week that I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of comments. And one of these comments made by the snark crew member, uh, by one snark crew member, was threatening. She threatened that I, assumedly, was going to get these hands. She did put a legal disclaimer at the end, but it is still threatening. All four forms of manipulation, and I'm sure if I knew the whole extent of it, I would have all kinds more. Everything that I just listed as an example was sent to me after the fact. I don't stalk Instagram stories. I don't know what they're saying about me unless somebody sends it to me. Because to be honest with you, their reactions have nothing to do with me. I didn't elicit those reactions. I have no control over their emotional responses. That is all 100% up to them. I have control over myself. I have control in the aspect of I can speak up when I want to and I will not be silenced. I care a lot about a lot of women in the MLM industry and I care a lot about a lot of women who have left MLMs and are now borderline in between the MLM and the anti-MLM industry because to be honest with you, they don't dare to make the transition to call themselves an anti-MLM creator or community member. And neither do I. And it's not that I don't dare to. It's that I don't want to. I don't want to be associated with any number of women, whether it's five or it's 15 or 50. I don't want to be associated. I don't want to be put in the category with people who are out here actively, willingly, mom shaming, hurting, personally attacking women perpetually. It wouldn't mean a whole lot to me if I wasn't so well-versed in this behavior. I come from MLMs too, and I remember exactly what would happen if someone upset the top leader or challenged them in any way. I expected this. I assumed that this was a high control group. It makes me think if the FTC or any governing body over MLM was to stumble upon the content that the anti-MLM community in particular, the snark crew is creating or did create, and they saw the ad hominem attacks that were being leveraged against women in MLMs, would they take any complaints with those people seriously? Or would they see it as retribution and retaliation? I have to question that. And if that is so, if they were to stumble upon one of those videos where ad hominem attacks were being carried out, would they clump all anti-MLM creators in that same bucket? I would like to add that this behavior, this manipulation and, and the, the evidence that I've just shared with you that happened after my two videos were released is a minor compared to what some anti-MLM creators have been up to in the last few years. Some others are going so far as to bully women off the internet completely. 
Some of them are making vexatious threats, like, I'm going to call your employer. I bet they would love to see how you're acting right now. I'm telling. I'm going to tell on you. Seriously, this stuff is happening. I never saw anything even remotely close happen in an MLM. Never, ever, 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 ever. And I saw some stuff. I cannot believe the level that some women are willing to go so that they feel like they're right. Like, I just can't get my head wrapped around that. And I've been to jail. I've seen how all walks of life act. I would like to point out the characteristics of cults that I personally believe, in my opinion, align with this group. I am not calling them a cult, but I am pointing out that there are some mirroring behaviors that could become dangerous. These are taken from an excerpt written in the Take Back Your Life, Recovering from Cults and Abusive Relationships book. When I say this, I'm going to say what they say in the book, and then I'm going to give you an applied um, action from the anti MLM group that I have seen or that I have perceived and how I feel they are like the first one, the group is elitist claiming a special exalted status for itself and its members. And then applied that would look like basically we can do whatever we want. Nobody can call us out. We're above everybody. We are superior in some way. That attitude the second one, the group has a polarized us versus them mentality, which may cause conflict within the greater society. This applied looks like weaponizing social justice themes against MLMers or anyone who challenges them. The leader is not accountable to any authorities applied. This would look like the rules just don't apply to them. There is no rules. There is no authorities. The group teaches or implies that it's, it's supposed exalted ends justify whatever means deemed necessary. <laughs> This may result in members participating in behaviors or activities they would have considered reprehensible or unethical before joining the group. So apply, this would look like using ad hominem and immoral arguments, bullying, probably something they never would have done before they joined this particular crew. When people get together and they see one person doing it, another, 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 they feel supported, cushioned, if you will, if they start doing it as well. They feel like, okay, well, if I go down, the rest of this crew goes down with me, so I have support. The leadership induces feelings of shame or guilt in order to influence and control members. Ap applied. People were being told that by engaging in my videos, they were supporting my argument and therefore not standing with the anti-MLM community. Another way to look at that is um, information control. Trying to say to other people, you're not allowed to look at her videos. You're not allowed to engage in her videos because if you check out her videos or you say anything, uh, engage in any way, you're supporting her argument. You're agreeing with her. That is essentially information control and is something that supposedly MLMs use as a cult-like tactic. But we are seeing it here in this case being used by this group of anti-MLM creators. Questioning, doubt, and dissent are discouraged or punished. Applied. Basically what I just said. Anyone who questions them is manipulated and attacked, in my opinion. With all that said, I think there are two things wrong with MLMs and anti-MLM creators alike. Their approach, aka the setup or the structure, and the people within it 
having ulterior motives, lacking empathy, and seeing themselves as devoid from consequences or rules of any kind. If a top performer wants to make money and is even a tad bit narcissistic, they will plow over and through anyone that they can in order to get into that top spot, to get that title, to get that rank, to stand on stages, to make speeches. They would do anything. They'd rip off their own mother just to get a trophy. And I've seen it. When I figured out exactly what 99% of top leadership was like in MLMs, that is when I started questioning everything. That is when I understood, okay, this is what they're really doing behind the scenes. I don't want any part of this. With that being said, I do not believe all people in MLMs are bad. I do not believe all MLM companies are high control groups. And I do not believe that all MLMs mirror cults. Now, as far as anti-MLM goes, the way that some people have structured their approach, it is not working. In the same way that MLMs can be harmful, especially to women, since it's a majority of women, uh, their demographic, so can some MLM content. In the same way that there are tactics used in MLMs, it appears that there are also manipulation tactics used in some of the anti-MLM creator communities as well. If an anti-MLM were to acquire a large audience and is using ad hominem attacks as their focus content, is that any different than an MLM or plowing through people to get to the top of their company? Harm is done in both cases, and most of the time the people being harmed actually have no idea that they're being harmed at the time. They don't see it until they take a few steps back. Oftentimes, people are bamboozled because they long for community. People often end up in MLMs because they need community, and it appears that they also end up moving from the MLM community simply to the anti-MLM community because it leaves a bit of a hole. And trust me, I understand that lack of community and that really big cultural shock, if you will, uh, that happens after you leave an, an MLM. And it's really hard to just go from MLM immediately into anti-MLM because you do have that cognitive dissonance. You do question everything. You wonder, why did all these people block me? Why did all these people I was helping literally yesterday decide to turn their back on me? That left a hole in me that I honestly can't explain. And that is why I took all of 2022 and I did nothing but heal. I can see how people end up lashing out. I can see how people end up so hurt from the community that is just ripped from them that they have this need to project that outward. I see how with this Schadenfreude concept that I talked about in my last video, with this kind of obsession with online gossip and bullying and cyberbullying, I see how it happens because I felt the pain too. I just happened to know enough at that point that if I had gone on the internet and started making videos immediately after I had left MLMs, it wouldn't have ended well. It would have been me bullying. It would have been me calling people out by name. It would have been me making fun of people, mocking people, making a mockery of people in MLMs. It absolutely would have happened if I hadn't taken the time to heal properly. And that is what hurts me when I look at the discourse in all of this. Because it doesn't have to be this way. We can get through to people in MLMs a lot easier if we're kind. But like I said in my last video, people are turning away from the anti-MLM movement left and right. People are leaving anti-MLM and going back to MLMs because they're so frustrated with what they're seeing go on. They're seeing big creators leave the, the community and they're leaving with them, going back to MLMs. But that need for community sometimes outweighs logic, outweighs risk. They see benefit versus risk and the benefit is more to them. And the last thing I will share is a carousel post I saw last week from an Instagram account called The Cult Business. The Cult Shaped Whole. When a person leaves a high control group, it often creates a large empty space in their life. 
And since it was originally shaped by a cult, it will likely be filled by another high control group. When leaving a cult, the best thing to do is avoid joining another group or community. The longer you remain out without diving into anything else, the hole will gradually close and heal just like any wound. Over time, as the cult-shaped hole heals, you'll find yourself less drawn to groups with characteristics and belief systems that seek to control your life. Ways to recover and heal without joining another group. Read cult recovery stories, books, and memoirs. Seek a licensed trauma-informed therapist. Connect with other cult survivors. Take care of your mind and body. Exercise, eat healthy, meditate, sleep and learn how to set and maintain healthy boundaries. I'm doing this series as a way of educating with supporting evidence and factual information. This is in no way a personal attack on certain creators because I dislike them. So I will close with this. If you have a dog in this fight, whether you're MLM, anti-MLM, please fill out the MLM survey put in the description. Uh, There will be a link there. There's a conference coming up that will be educational and has some incredible panelists who have had a lot of experience with both sides, who've been in MLMs and who are now anti-MLM. But even if you are pro-MLM, you are more than welcome to take this survey, share your opinion. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for coming to The Brie Bear Show.